much you'll get into them and, and step aside and bottle them. So I'll, care, I'll be holding them for you. We'll bring Bud and his family in this store right here. What? Well, how do you do? How are you? Very well, thank you. Good. President, I'd like for you to meet my oldest family friend, Mrs. Lawrence Riley. But hello there. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. Uh, my daughter Lauren. Hi. 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 Melissa. Hello, Melissa. Hi. My son Hi. Scott. Hello. Hello. Hi. Nice to see you. Hi. 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 I'm George Bush. Very nice to see you. Nice, nice to, see to meet you. you. Well, well this is you know my children. Well, I'm Melissa? not sure we've probably <laughs> seen each other around the hall or something. Hi, Scott. Good to see you, sir. Nice to see you. What? Yes. Yeah, family shop. Smile. I'm doing it. One more. You want to stand right there? Yes, sir. I'll get an extra chair. I'll get an extra chair. I'll get an extra chair. Hold her up here. great. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. I think we better go in. There's always somebody waiting for you, isn't there? I think it's very We'll have the. How do you all? On October 17th, 1983, I picked Bud to be my national security advisor. At that time, I made some strong predictions of what I expected of him. And my crystal ball was right on. I described a man with the spirit of teamwork, keen judgment who would work for a foreign policy that was based on peace through strength, and Bud has proven to be that catalyst. His ability to weigh both sides of an issue and to provide key advice has been invaluable. In Geneva, Bud was there with his wealth of experience and knowledge and was instrumental in paving the way toward our goal of peace through strength. But under your outstanding leadership, the National Security Council has consistently provided the support that I've needed. Your people have given me 200% because you generated their loyalty, their creativity, and their very best efforts through your own fine example. Bud McFarland has been an advisor to three presidents. He's given his country 30 years of remarkable achievement and service and we'll all miss him. But in announcing your appointment 26 months ago, I stated that all of us look forward to working with you in the coming months. But I want to confirm that I was absolutely right. And I'm now certain that John Poindexter will carry on those same talents as your successor. There is one thing I'm going to have to get used to, that in the night when the phone rings at midnight or three o'clock in the morning, I'm going to have to get over just picking up the phone and saying, yes, bud, what is it? <laughs> <laughs> well, your presence has been truly appreciated, and thank you for a job. Well done. souvenirs so you won't forget us. <laughs> That's really very kind, Mr. President. <clears throat> Sir, Mr. Vice President, the reality that this must have needs be pass as, as a moment for you and your life is much more crowded in the coming moments and hours and days than is my own. So you don't deserve to have inflicted a long speech and I, I won't. <laughs> You're very kind today as always and the enormous honor that you have done me my father was a 
public servant for all of his life, and he said to me that it's the highest calling that anyone can aspire to. It surely has been. I don't think anybody could have been as richly blessed as I have been in 30 years of good fortune and opportunity to serve under some of the most remarkable leaders in our country's history. Most importantly, your own, Mr. President. I said when the announcement was made last week that the remarkable accomplishment of these past four years is, is so easily forgotten and has seemed so easy. And that's another of your qualities. The enormity of change from an economy in decline, alliances, the fabric of which was very, very tautly stretched. A military balance dramatically shifted against us. To a time today when we are deterring, surely, your statement in the campaign that we had not lost one square inch of territory was not a cliché. It was profoundly important to hundreds of millions of people. An economy that's not only prospering but leading the world out of recession. Alliances that are once more confident that they have a leader in the White House. They're standing more firmly with us because of it. All these things, to have been a very small part of that is, is a profoundly humbling moment. I think that, that the thanks really goes to all of you, surely to my wife. Scott and Melissa and Laurie, and truly to each of you, to my staff, that seldom, if ever, gets any credit to Cap, to George, to Bill Casey, Bill Crow, John Wickham, Charlie, PX, Jim, and countless others. Brent Scowcroft, who's been like a father to me. So I do thank you, and I want you to know how proud I have been of this time, how pleased I would be to serve again. This is a wonderful experiment to which Jefferson said, we all placed our lives, our fortunes, and our sacred honor. What a wonderful opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. Enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, even John was
presentation we had was on uh, high technology and computers, and these gentlemen might be interested. We had a robot doing brain surgery on a, another, fortunately, dummy. Uh, <laughs> Scared the devil out of me. <laughs> <laughs> and the second meeting we had was we collected a, a number of eminent scientists in the space field to let you know what we could anticipate <coughs> in space um, for the next three years. And we have uh, leaders in the field of various schools of medicine here uh, to tell you what you can expect to see uh, over the next several years. And with that, Free fall. Thank you for all of you for coming here and doing this. I'm looking forward to it. I, uh, I know, of course, some of the problems that you have to put up with socially with regard to people with symptoms. I know the business that I used to be in lost heart to play right was notorious for meeting a doctor and suddenly having some symptoms. <laughs> One night at a cocktail party, he was introduced to Dr. Jones by name, and uh, he immediately started off with low back pain. And the man who introduced him to Barry said, Moss, Dr. Jones is a doctor of economics. <laughs> and he stopped at Moss for about 10 seconds. And he said, I must have stopped the other But he know it or not, also, but I can't resist about the great faith healer or the rockets out of Oklahoma. The story has it that he died and introduced himself to St. Peter. And St. Peter said, D or Roberts? He said, Where are From Oklahoma? Wait a minute, the Lord want to hear about this. And he went in and told the Lord, and the Lord said, The real important life is this is in Oklahoma. So he was taken in to meet the Lord. Welcomed him to heaven. And he said, Listen, I've been having a pain. Well, with all that out of the way, please, this is a working lunch, so we can all talk with our mouths full. Somebody start it off. Except I don't have a single symptom. <laughs> <laughs> We all met. Um, we all met. 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 We all We just returned from Stockholm, actually, on Sunday. Jim gets out of the bushes, we'll do this. Actually, it was a unanimous bipartisan vote. <laughs> <Crassy. laughs> I heard was raised and wanted to get out of town today. But they got a couple of important things to do with it. Yeah, it's a good team victory, sir, and you were the, you were the captain. Oh, uh, listen, I appreciate it. I get a little mad at you with those orange, orange folders. Stuff. <laughs> <laughs> you see, it isn't just that particular job. You happen to be sending them to a fellow that has never liked 
phony. <laughs> <laughs> you made 40 plus. That's right, make the difference. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President.